One of the formidable challenges facing the world is to how to feed the 9.2 billion people that we will have in 2050. 24,000 people a day die from chronic malnutrition. Indeed, this was the same kind of challenge that faced Norman Borlaug when he started the program which led to the Green Revolution in Mexico in 1944. Norman Borlaug did his PhD under Professor Stakeman in Minnesota, who was head of plant pathology. They shared one passion, and that was to try and incorporate resistance to stem rust of wheat. This is a fungal disease that has ravaged wheat crops since the beginning of time. And Steak and Norm Borlaug shared the vision that this disease was so important that it had to be conquered in order to create the benefits of the Green Revolution. When Norman Borlaug joined the program in Mexico in 1944, he was under the impression that this was going to be a short contract of two to three years. In fact, what happened is that he stayed in Mexico for 62 years, working under the Rockefeller Foundation on the Green Revolution. And one of the problems is that when you irrigate wheat and you apply fertilizer, the wheat grows tall and it falls over. So what he did was quite unique. He chose to incorporate some dwarfing genes from Japan. This shortened the wheat, allowed you to put more fertilizer, more irrigation, but the crop stood and you were able to harvest that. Norman Borlaug increased the yield, kilograms per hectare or pounds per acre of wheat by 500% in 15 years. Having solved the issue in Mexico, Norman Borlaug turned his attention to the international scene. Asia was in very serious problems at that time. It was the age of triage. Many people said that India would not survive, but it was the Green Revolution with wheat that allowed yields to increase by 300%. The success in increasing yield of wheat in Asia in countries like India and Pakistan is what led to Norman Borlaug receiving the Nobel Peace Prize in December 1970. The citation says that he saved a thousand million people, one billion people from hunger, mainly in Asia. But the obligations imposed by the honors are far greater than the honor itself. Even though Norm Borlaug was in love with wheat germplasm, he understood that there was one germplasm that was even more important than wheat germplasm, and that was people. He believed that you needed human germplasm through training to shape wheat germplasm. And Norman Borlaug was more than the um, usual agronomist. He thought beyond that. It was Norman Borlaug that gave meaning to the phrase that you cannot build peace on empty stomachs. Norman Borlaug decided to found the World Food Prize. This was the equivalent of the Nobel Prize in Agriculture. In that same year, I invited Norman Borlaug to become the first founding member of a new organization, a not-for-profit organization that I had founded. That organization is called the International Service for the Acquisition of Agribiotech Applications. Norm accepted my invitation because he knew at that time that conventional technology alone will not allow us to feed the world of tomorrow. He became a believer in the new technologies. This is what he said about biotech crops a few years before he died. Over the past decade, we have been witnessing the success of plant biotechnology. This technology is helping farmers throughout the world produce higher yield while reducing pesticide use and soil erosion. The benefits and safety of biotechnology has been proven 
over the past decade in countries with more than half the world's population. What we need is courage by the leaders of those countries where farmers still have no choice but to use older and less effective methods. The Green Revolution and now plant biotechnology are helping meet the growing demand for food production while preserving our environment for future generations. One of the challenges facing Norman Borlaug in 1944 was to incorporate resistance to the most important disease of wheat worldwide, that was stem rust. And he was very successful in doing that. In fact, one of the varieties that he used was a variety called Hope. Fifty years later, the same enemy came back to haunt Norman Borlaug. That was a strain of stemorous found in Uganda in 1999. We refer to it as UG99 because it was found in Uganda. Interestingly, by this time, Norman Borlaug had access to a new technology, biotechnology, that allowed him to devise a program that would make full use of biotechnology in controlling this disease. So it is interesting to note that at the beginning of his career, the big enemy was stem rust. Right at the end of his career, that same enemy returned. And now he was able to use the power of biotechnology. He often used to say that he was very glad that he was able to live right through the Green Revolution. He also said towards the end of his life that he was sorry that he would not be able to see the fruits of biotechnology. <laughs>